All right, thank you. Uh, so I'm JB. I'm um, uh, working for Dremio. I'm going to introduce quickly what Dremio is. I'm also a member of the Apache Software Foundation. Um, so in this talk, I want to be more concrete. I mean, we had uh, some presentation about uh, open services cloud, expense, etc. In this talk, it's more like how expense can help companies like Dremio to actually go multi-cloud. Uh, and how actually expense is working. Uh, so Dremio, in a um, in few words, we are a Lakehouse company. So basically, what is a Lakehouse is compared to Snowflake, for instance, as a data wells, you put your data on Snowflake and you do queries on this data. At Dremio, we do the opposite. We move the executor, so the engine, where your data are allocated. So basically, if your data is on S3 or is a JSON file or a Parquet file, whatever, it doesn't really matter. We bring the engine, and so you are able to do queries, to, do, to have joins, whatever. So we, we can access uh, different data. Dremio Cloud is composed by two parts, the uh, control plane and the execution plane. We are not naming it data plane. And so, we're going to see how expense can help Dremio to do multi-cloud. So in Brian's talk, you saw that we have a lock-in, lock-out problem extra. And one, the first answer is to use something in the middle. So instead of directly going to a cloud provider, you go through a kind of description of what's going to be your cloud provider. So Brian's introduced the, all the private APIs provided by the cloud providers but they keep it for, for them, it's private. So through Open Services Cloud and the framework, we can access directly to these low level APIs like billing, uh, deployment, identity management, etc. And so as a, a service provider like Dremio, we describe what we need to expense. And so expense is able to translate what we need into something specific for the cloud providers. So instead of doing tight couple with, I don't know, Google or AWS, whatever, we're going to describe and then we delegate the cloud management to expense. So that's basically the ideas. And so you can see in the middle the red box. So the color are not so perfect. <laughs> so you can see on the middle, this is the, the, the red box, which is basically this framework that translate what we describe to something that a cloud service provider can actually run. So that's exactly Open Service Cloud. And so the first part of Open Service Cloud is the global idea, and Expense is the first project in this ecosystem. So the first project is Expense as a framework. So this framework uses something in the middle, which is the orchestrator. So the orchestrator is going to take something which is language, so it's what in a, we name OCL, Open Service Cloud lang Configuration Language. So we describe what we want. We give this uh, descriptor to the orchestrator. And the orchestrator has a set of plugins. One cloud provider, one plugin. So I'm going to have one plugin for Huawei Cloud. I'm going to have one plugin for AWS, one plugin for Google Cloud, whatever. And so for me, as a service provider, the only things that matter is the, the orchestrator language. Maybe your question is going to be how it could be different from Terraform or other language like this, because we can already do that using Terraform. But Terraform is only a top of the cloud providers. You don't have access to the billing system. You don't have access to the low level. Imagine I want to deploy something for Dremio Cloud. I want to deploy something running on, a, on S3. But I don't have S3 on Azure. So I can do that. I can, I can use Minayo, but the performance won't be so great compared to S3 native. So thanks to Xpens, I can decide, OK, I would like to have access to this file system, to a file system like S3. And then Xpens can say, OK, you are on, on AWS, then you're going to use S3. You are on Azure, you're going to use ALS, which is like S3. So that's the huge advantage of Xpens. I can actually abstract my deployment and my description of a service. So 
So in a nutshell, how it works is basically all is based on two things. Um, we have a, a set of REST APIs, so you can, there are two approaches in expense. You can use expense as a mediation, so meaning that you have expense provide a console, and then this console can interact with a different service provider. Or expense can be tightly, I mean, integrated into the uh, cloud provider console. So basically, you, your end users, they don't know we are using expense. They just know, okay, I have a new service deployed on my cloud provider, and I'm using my regular console, and I have a new service, but behind the hood is provided by expense, but they don't know. They just know that they are a new service. Uh, in terms of tech stack, there are something uh, that could change uh, in the development, but that's the state of the art today. So on the front end side, the admin console that I, uh, I talked before, we are using all these con components, so it's based on Node.js and React for all the front end. The back end is pure Java. Uh, we are using Spring Boot. Um, it could change at some point due to different license aspect of the thing. Um, uh, about the code repo is pure Eclipse, is the GitHub uh, Eclipse. We can also interact with IRC, like uh, Terraform by itself. So if you're already using Terraform, Expense can generate Terraform file for you. So we have two layers, so directly using the APIs from the cloud service provider, and if those APIs do not, does not exist yet, then we can go through um, the, uh, the Terraform. Obviously, obviously it's governed by uh, the Eclipse rules and foundation. Um, so, concrete example, Adremio. So as I said, Adremio, we have two parts. The part where you have the um, left, uh, the left part for you, yeah, left, uh, is the execution plane. So the execution plane is basically where you're going to execute your queries, your SQL queries. And then, the, today, it's managed purely on Google. So it's running on JCP. And we don't plan to change it, because we control the cloud provider. We don't have needs for multi-cloud there, because we, we manage for, 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 for us. But the execution plan, which is the right side, is running on the customer VPC, on the customer cloud. And here, we support AWS or Azure. And it's where, especially for Europe, it's important to be able to support any kind of cloud. Because tomorrow, maybe one uh, customer may ask to be on Clever Cloud, or OVH, or whatever, uh, or Yonos, or whatever. So in that case, I need to be able to deploy on this cloud provider without effort. And that's the location where expense can be interesting for us, because we will be able to deploy on uh, any cloud provider. Uh, that's more for Alexander talk, so I don't want to, uh, to uh, interact. Um, for the, another aspect of expense, which is uh, very interesting, is everything is extensible. So we can remove part, you want to change the authentication layer, then you just replace authentication, but your own authentication. You want to, to change the storage, because we manage, we store a lot of metadata inside expense to deal with the deployment. You want to change the storage, it's completely pluggable. So you can, uh, you can contribute to expense by adding new functionalities and new features. Another important aspect is all about uh, community expansion. So uh, expense is running. I mean, it's available. You can download it. You can test it. But you can also contribute to it. So if you have new plugins, new IDs, new features, feel free to join the eclipse.dev slash expense. And so you can subscribe on the mail list. You can contribute and, uh, on pull requests, extra. So yeah, you, um, uh, that's pretty interesting. And the most important, in my opinion, for expense is the plugins. More we have plugins to support different kind of cloud providers, better it's going to be for end users. Because end users like Dremio, we can contribute, but we have, a, I would say, we don't have the skills of the cloud service provider developers to provide the low level APIs because we don't know them. So that's for me the most important. If we can have software uh, cloud service providers that contribute to expense, that's even better. And that's it. Thank you so much.